Alright, hello everybody, and today we're going to be having a look at the infinite products representation for our zeta function right here. So we know our zeta function can be defined in terms of a sum, which is the sum running from k equals to 1 to infinity of 1 over k to the s. And this thing right here also has a infinite product definition, and it's called the Euler product. And it's quite an interesting one because it involves prime numbers. So before we get into the derivation of this product formula right here, I want to touch on a little bit of number theory, I guess, a bit of set theory, whatever, because it'll make things a little bit more intuitive um, in the later stages of this video. So I want to consider some set, let's call it S for now and what S is going to be it's just going to be the set of all natural numbers so one two three four and so on and I want to take a look at all the numbers that are not prime in this set let's actually continue this a little bit let's go for five six seven and eight as well so there's our set S right here and I want to look at all the numbers that are not prime so for all n element of s and we're actually going to be excluding one and you will see why in a second so for every single element in this set right here that's not prime we can actually express n as some kind of product of primes so i'm going to use this notation right here it's a bit weird so we can always express some number that's not prime or in other words some composite number in our natural numbers right here in terms of a product of primes and that's one of the properties of prime numbers. They can be multiplied together in different ways to form any number in the set of the natural numbers. So for example, our 8 right here can decompose it into 2 times 2 times 2. So 8, not times. 8 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2. And 2 is a prime number. Let's do it for 6. 6 can be decomposed into 2 times 3. 2 and 3 are both prime. And let's say something a little bit more exotic. Let's say um, 42. We can decompose that into 7 times 6, but 6 can be also decomposed into 3 times 2. And all these numbers right here are prime. So pretty much what I'm getting at right here is that every single composite number in the set of the natural numbers can be expressed as a product of some combination of primes. And we can extend this idea further into all the composite numbers plus all the primes. So let's consider some n in our set s again, again not including 1. And I guess the reason why we're not including 1 is that you can't decompose 1 into any prime numbers because it's less than every single other prime number. So we're just excluding 1 for now. So if we consider all of our n's again that are an element of s, what we can actually do is we can express n as some multiple of a prime number. And our multiple right here, our k, is also an element of natural numbers. So it doesn't matter what k is, as long as it's in the set of natural numbers, we can express any number, n, in our set right here, as a multiple of a prime number. And the reason why this is important will become a little bit more clear later on. But now we have our set s right here, and what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start using multiples of primes, so this thing right here, multiples of primes, to kind of filter out all the natural numbers. So if we have our set right here, and let's say we multiply our set by 2, I'm going to use this notation right here. So what that means is we're going to multiply every single element inside of our set s by 2. So if we take 2 times s, that's going to be equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and so on so that's all the even numbers and you see 2 is also our first prime number so pretty much all we're doing is we're trying to kind of get rid of all the multiples of our first prime number 2 right here so if we take our set s and we kind of get rid of all the elements inside of our set 2s what are we going to be left with we're going to be left with all the odd numbers so everything not including even numbers so 1 3 5 7 9 and so on and I'm actually going to call this new set S2. So let's actually call our original set S1. So S1 like so. And now S2 will be everything excluding the multiples of our first prime number 2. So let's actually do the same thing again but for our next prime number. Because notice we can't mess around with the number 2 anymore because it's kind of being filtered out. So if we take out S2 and we multiply it by the next prime number. So 3 times S2. We're going to get 3, 9, 15, um, 21, 
what's 3 times 9, 27 and so on. And you see this set right here contains all the multiples of our next prime number which is 3, so all the multiples of 3. And what we're going to be doing with this set is we're going to be taking our set S2 right here and removing all these elements. But the problem is you might notice that these are actually not all the multiples of 3. We're missing numbers like 6, 12, 18 and so on. But the thing is these numbers are also multiples of our first prime number 2. So pretty much they've already been accounted for so we don't really need to count them again. So if we take our set S2 and we get rid of 3 S2, so all these elements right here, we're going to be left with well, we're going to have 1, 5, 7, 9 is going to disappear because it's in 3s2. And then what's next? We're going to have 11 and so on. And let's call this new set right here s3, okay? So what happens if we take our next prime number? So we've dealt with 2, we've dealt with 3. Let's take 5 for now. What happens if we take 5 times s3? Well, well, that set is going to be 5, 25, 35, 55, and so on. And if we take our set S3 right here, this set is S3, and we get rid of 5S3, what are we going to be left with? We're going to be left with 1, 7, 11, and some other stuff after that. So you see what we're kind of doing right here is we're getting rid of all the multiples of the primes in our set of natural numbers. And remember this little equation right here, n is equal to k times p. So any number in our set of natural numbers right here can be expressed as a multiple of a prime. So if we keep going with this process right here, if we keep getting rid of all the multiples of every single prime, eventually we're actually going to get rid of all the elements in our natural numbers except for this one right here. So all the natural numbers will get filtered out because we're getting rid of all the multiples of every single prime possible and what that's going to do is that's going to hit all the natural numbers except for one right here. If we keep going with this process right here, originally we had S1, then S2, then S3, and then S4 eventually. This is S4 right here. Each time we create one of these new sets right here, we're going through all the multiples of a specific prime. So if we take the limit as our, that's an ugly M, if we take the limit as let's say I goes to infinity of the set SI, so we're filtering out multiples of bigger and bigger primes. And remember, there is some kinds of theorem which states that there is an infinite number of primes. So we can actually do this, take the limit as i approaches infinity of si. The set that we're going to be left with, we're going to be filtering out all these natural numbers right here. And the only thing that we're going to be left with is this one. So pretty much if we filter out all the multiples of all the primes, we're going to be left with a set that only contains one right here. So with this idea in mind, let's actually go ahead and try to derive the product formula for our zeta function. All right, so now that I've introduced it this way, hopefully it becomes a little bit more clear as to what we're going to do now. Because notice this sum right here, if we expand it out a little bit, it's going to be one over one to the s, plus one over two to the s, plus one over three to the s, plus dot dot dot. And you can kind of treat this one, two, three, four, and so on, like our set from before. So we have one, two, three, four, and so on. What happens if we take out all the k's right here being even? So in order to obtain all the k's being even, what we need to do is multiply this thing right here, this kind of set, by one over two to the s. So if we actually do that, we're going to be multiplying this zeta by one over two to the s, so 1 over 2 and zeta, that's kind of weird. So zeta of s, and that's going to give us 1 over 1 to the s times 2 to the s is 2 to the s. So 2 to the s times 2 to the s is 4 to the s. You get the idea, we're going to keep going. So we can have 2, 4, 6 to the s, 8 to the s, and so on. And if we kind of remove all of these elements from here from our original set, that's pretty much subtracting this thing right here, 1 over 2 to the s times zeta, from our original zeta. So if we take this zeta minus this other part right here, we can factor out the zetas and we're gonna get zeta of s and I'm gonna put it here. So we're gonna have one minus one over two to the s like so. Being equal to this series right here minus this series. So we're gonna have one over one to the s 
And then this 2 is going to disappear. We're going to have 1 over 3 to the s left, plus 1 over 5 to the s, plus 1 over 7 to the s, plus dot, dot, dot. So this thing right here, this is kind of like our s2 from before, our new set. And we want to get rid of all the multiples of our next prime. So let's multiply this set right here by 1 over 3 to the s. So if we do that, if we have 1 over 3 to the s times 1 minus 1 over 2 to the s times zeta of s, we're going to get 1 over 3 to the s plus 1 over 9 to the s plus 1 over 15 to the s plus 1 over 21 to the s plus dot dot dot. And if we subtract this thing from here, we're going to filter out all the multiples of those. We're going to have 3, 9, our 12 is already going to be dealt with by this 1 over 2 right here, 15 and so on. So if we subtract this thing from here, so this minus this, notice that we have this part right here from before, that's a common factor. So we can factor that out and we're going to be left with 1 over 1 over 3 to the s times 1 over 1 minus 2 to the s times zeta of s. And that's going to be equal to, well, we're going to have 1 over 1 to the s still. Remember this 1 over 1 to the s will remain untouched each iteration of this process right here. So we're going to have 1 over 1 to the s plus what's next, 1 over 5 to the s plus 1 over 7 to the s plus dot dot dot. And you can actually see a nice pattern emerging right here, especially on the left hand side, because each time we go through each of those iterations where we kind of remove every multiple of each prime, we get this kind of new factor added on to the start of this zeta right here. So if we keep going with this process, we have our 2, we have our 3, what's next? We're going to have 1 minus 1 over 5 to the s and all the primes up until infinite many primes. Each time we do that, we're gonna get rid of more and more of these terms on the right hand side right here. Just like with our sets from the previous part of the video, the more multiples of each prime we take away, the more numbers on the right we take away as well. So if we take this whole entire process and take it towards infinity, we're going to have infinitely many of these terms on the left hand side right here, and we can write this as an infinite product. So we have now the product, of 1 minus 1 over, and I'm going to be calling the new index p, p for prime, so 1 minus 1 over p to the s, where p is all the prime numbers, so p, where they are all prime, times zeta of s, and remember with our sets from before, if we keep going with this process, the only element we're going to be left with at the very end is our 1. So each iteration of this process right here, this first term, this 1 over 1 to the s, will remain untouched. So if we keep doing this infinitely many times, all of these numbers will get destroyed completely and we're going to be left with exactly 1. So we've gotten to this point right here and now we're ready to express zeta of s in terms of its infinite product. Let's now isolate our zeta of s by dividing both sides by our infinite product. So we have zeta of s being equal to, now because our product is multiplying a bunch of things together, if we move on to the other side, we're going to be multiplying its reciprocals together. So we're going to have still our infinite product for all the p being prime. And then we're going to have 1 minus, um, I'm going to put it like this, p to the minus s raised to the negative 1 power. And this thing right here, this infinite product is called the Euler product for our zeta function right here. And this thing right here is really interesting when I first saw it because somehow all the prime numbers that could possibly exist pop up inside of this product right here and they all contribute to form some weird function zeta of s. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a wonderful day and I'll see everyone next time.